What is up guys, in this video I will be showing off one of my favorite mods to do, installing Bluetooth controllable RGB LEDs into a GameCube controller. Alright guys, so for this build, the most important things we're going to need are going to be the LED strip and the Bluetooth RGB controller board. Now a quick note about the RGB LED strips, all of them that are 5 volts that will have 4 pins will work with this controller board, but I recommend that you do get the ones that have 16 LEDs per meter. Now most of them that you can find nowadays on Amazon and eBay are all 30 LEDs per meter. And I don't know what happened, but when I first started doing this mod a couple years ago, the standard was 15 or 16 LEDs per meter on the roll. And this provides the perfect amount of space for each LED for them to fit inside the controller exactly where we're going to put them. And I'll explain that when we get to the part where we start modifying the controller shell. Now I'll have links to these strips on my website in the description box below. Now if you have some LED strips laying around that have the same pinout, which is the GRB Plus, they will work, like I said but you will have to either cover over some of the LEDs so they don't shine through or unsolder them. And it's kind of annoying to have to do that because these LED strips rip pretty easy. Now the next thing we're gonna need is a shell. So I have a box of aftermarket GameCube shells. So let's pick out some colors. Um, I wanna go with orange. And then of course we're gonna need a clear back. So I got a clear one right here. So let's do orange and clear. Now a quick note about these shells as well. A lot of the aftermarket shells in the past haven't been very good quality. They're okay, but they always required a little bit of modification to get the original GameCube controller boards to fit in them correctly. These are great because they house the GameCube controller motherboard without any extra modification. So we'll be using these today. And I'll have a link to these down in the description box below as well. We'll go ahead and set those to the side for now. And let's first get started on prepping the LED strip with the controller board. So you're gonna need a little bit of this four pin wire and a wire stripper. So since we are installing the LED strip into a controller that has a clear back, we want the LEDs to shine through the back as well as the analog stick, the D-pad, the C stick, and the A button. That's our goal. So we're going to need to cut section that is four LEDs and then three LEDs. So I'm just gonna snip off a seven LED section first. Two, three, four, five, six, seven and then we'll start from here. And if you're using a controller that does not have a clear back and you wanna just install the LEDs into the both sticks, the D-pad and the A button, you're only gonna need a three LED section and a two LED section. So you just cut off one on each end. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and peel the rubber off the top of this LED strip. The back you can leave on, you can take it off if you want, but it doesn't get in the way, but the rubber does. Be really careful when you're doing this because sometimes this rubber is on here really well and it can rip the LEDs off. Okay, now that we have that all removed, we can go ahead and cut the sections that we need. So like I said, we're gonna need a four LED section and a three LED section. Just cut off three of them right at the line. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of these pins. Just hit them with a little heat, push them off. So now that we have our LED strips ready, let's go ahead and prepare our controller board. So what we're gonna do with this is we're actually going to take it out of this plastic casing. Carefully take a knife and just kind of cut along the side of it. And then Grab a marker if you have one, because this just kind of makes it easier later. We want to make sure that we mark which side has the black V plus, because that's going to correspond with how we solder in the wires. So it's on this side. I just put a little dot there so I know which side's which. All right, toss that. Go ahead and slice this down the middle of the two wires and just remove it. Then you can go ahead and cut those wires. 
And you can throw this part away because we're not gonna need it because we're gonna solder this straight into the board. Okay, next up we're gonna need two about one inch sections of this four pin wire. And strip those. Be careful not to fray the wire. bit of flux helps bust the mat out. All right, those tin. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove these pins from here and then we're going to solder this wire to it. Add a little extra solder. All right. I like to separate the ends of these just a little bit, just enough to kind of gap them out. And be real careful not to bridge any of these connections. All right, so now that we have our controller board ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and grab our four LED strip because we're using a clear back. If you're not using a clear back, you'll be using a three LED strip, but we're using the four. So how this is gonna lay down is this sits like this, okay? And then this is gonna wrap around this way and then feed this way through here. Then this other wire is gonna be soldered to the end of it and then it's gonna come across and around like this. I know it's kinda, it, it'll make sense when we get to the part. So how we need this to solder down here is like this. And I'll show you, it's gonna be like this because of the way that it ends up folding in. We want it to sit like this. So it'll be the plus will be on the left and it's gonna lay like that. And then tin these connector points. should look like that good to go now that we have the first LED strip soldered into the controller board we're gonna go ahead and attach the second LED strip to it and this one goes in upside down in comparison to the way this one's set in you want to make sure that you're lining up the wires correctly because this one's gonna go down with the black that way so we have to make sure that we have the right one going this way so it's gonna be like that let's go ahead Solder it to this wire first. This kind of this side looks a little more burnt up because this one has the pins on it. It's all good. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and lay that down and make sure, double check one more time, that these are gonna line up perfectly where they're supposed to go blue to blue, R to R, G to G, plus to plus. Let's go ahead and set that down, same thing. Remember this is supposed to be upside down like this. And that's exactly how it should lay. And that just helps with the way that the LED strip kind of bends into position. I found that doing this one upside down helps twist that in. And there we go. Now I have our LED strip prepared and ready to install. But what I like to do after I get it all soldered together, I like to test it. I have a little power supply over here that I'm gonna put the little clips on and make sure it's working before I glue it in. Okay, so I have the strip hooked up to my power supply right now. When you plug it in, you should get a RGB. That's how mine's set up anyways, but let me pull up the app on my phone and you should be able to fully test it now. I realize that most of you won't have a power supply laying around, but if you plan on doing this mod multiple times, I do suggest getting one because the worst thing is when you get this fully installed and then it's all glued in and then you can't see the connections and then you solder it all into the controller and you have a problem. So it's best to test it now. 
And it looks like we're good. I like to go here. I mean, as long as you have red, green, blue, you're good. So, but if you're getting like red, green, purple, that means you have a, a blue and a red is crossed somewhere. So you need to check your connections and make sure they're not uh, shorting each other out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is just kind of a precaution that I've made a habit over the years. And we're gonna tape all of the exposed connections here. Cause what I've had happen to me in the past is if you lay this in the uh, controller shell, a little funky, this can touch on one of the components on the GameCube controller motherboard and then cause a short. So I just do this just to make sure that that's not gonna be an issue. All right, now that we have our strip all prepped and ready to go, let's go ahead and move on to modifying the controller shell. So grab your shell, and we're going to be drilling holes right here, 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 and then in the A button as well. I like to use a little battery powered Dremel, uh, makes it really easy. What we're gonna do is we're going to just kind of draw a circle right in here to the left of this post. When we're looking at it from above, right down, to the left, and then on this side, to the right. So you should have a little square that looks something like that. And we're gonna clean it up before we glue the LEDs in, but what you want is a, basically a square that's going to house exactly the size of where the LEDs are. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine are not very perfect, because you're not gonna see them. It's just there to, for the light to shine through, and that projects the light up into the stick, and then same thing with the D-pad, other stick, A button. Two holes there. And now for the D-pad one, I always line it up with this edge right here. So where that kind of that point is on the bottom of the D-pad, this whole area I kind of just take out. Same thing right here, kind of in the center, in this area right here. Same thing with the A button. Looking good, okay. And now we're just gonna go in and clean it up with a knife. Makes it a little bit easier to get the crisps off. You wanna make sure there's not anything in the A button especially, because it can drag on the button, but that one looks good. said it does not have to be a perfect square it just has to be big enough so that the LED can poke through it and then glue it in place all right there we have it there are our holes looking good and if you can get anything close to what these look like your first go you're good these are these are perfect that's a, that one's a little chunked, but I'll show you. It's really not gonna matter because you do not see it. That one's a little bit harder to cut because you wanna be careful not to take out these posts. See, I grinded this one a little bit. That's okay though. And then the A button, hole. Okay, so next step is we're going to be gluing the LED strip into the controller shell here. And I wanted to note also that this part of the shell right here it's a good idea to take that out too. And you can just take it out with some flush cutters because uh, the way the wires lay from the controller board for the Bluetooth controller board, uh, it, it helps if that is not there. You can leave it, but it, it'll sometimes pinch. So I'm just gonna cut it, cut out a little chunk for it. 
little spot for the wires to sit. Good, okay, so first thing we're gonna do, grab your hot glue gun, and I like to use hot glue. Though it is messy, it's great for mistakes because if you accidentally glue something in wrong, all you gotta do is hit it with a little rubbing alcohol and it comes right off. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this LED board in right like that. Let me show you how it's gonna lay before we start gluing it. And this is gonna come in and glue right there. Make sure that the LED pops in that hole. If the LED's not fitting in that hole correctly, then just go ahead and take your knife and kind of cut it out. This is gonna fold like this. And this is gonna go around here. and swing around the corner. So let's do it part by part. So I'll go ahead and get a little glue right here. I usually just put a little bit right there. Stick the controller board. I shove it in the corner next to this post right here and just kind of press it in. All right, now what we're gonna do, and be careful not to burn yourself here because hot glue is hot. Pinch it like that. Apply a little bit of glue in this corner right here. and then kind of set it in. And if you have like a plastic spudger, that's what I'll usually use to hold it in place. I do not have it, so I'm gonna use this knife. Just kind of hold it in place like that. And you wanna make sure that you can get it as flush as you can. See how flush that is? That's sticking up a little bit, but that's not glued. So that's gonna push down when the board gets in, it'll push it down. Because if, if the LED strip is sticking up too much and glued in place, it makes it so the board can't sit flush. But that's what's the nice thing about these LED strips is they fit perfectly. Like they're the perfect width to fit inside of, right next to the analog stick, the C stick, the D-pad, it's kind of cool. So anyways, so the next thing we're gonna do is this is gonna wrap around like this. And then this is gonna kind of tuck in here. And we'll come back and glue this last. But you wanna get this other LED in place first because this one's more important. So we're gonna go all the way over to this one right here and glue this one in place. So, not, so if you can hold it in place like that, you're good. Just kinda of hold this part back. That's how I like to do it. Hold that part back a little bit. Get a little glue right there, just a little bit. You can come back and put more in after and then kind of hold it in place. There you go. And then get a little on the other side. So let's go ahead and get this one glued in place. This is probably the more awkward one to glue in place. But we're gonna set it down like that. And then you wanna make sure, see how this is sitting you want to make sure that you get this LED up so you can see it just like that see how it's sitting up like that and I'm holding it with my finger that's exactly how you want to have it and then you can just sneak some glue in underneath it and press it into place you definitely want to use a tool for this one because it is hot hold that in place it's exactly how you want it to look and then this flop, this is flopping up a little bit right there. We're gonna put a little bit of glue right there and stick that down like that. And then it'll be all set. The way this LED sits in the D-pad right here, it's not going anywhere. You don't have to glue it. I don't, I don't glue it anymore because it just kind of, it, it's right where it needs to be. But if you want to, you can tack a little bit of glue underneath it but once you get the rubber uh, contact pad in there, it doesn't move around at all. So I usually just leave that kind of floating in there. That's why I kind of made the hole so big. So you have a little bit of room to work with. If it's gonna go this way or that way. So we're gonna move on to the left side, or I guess it would be the right side, the left side from where we're looking. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna cut in between the green and the red wire right here and kind of separate these wires a little bit. 
because they're gonna kind of fold on top of each other and it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so just like how I got it, fold it in and then get this LED tucked in right here so it peeks through that hole right there. Swing it around, hold it with your left hand, and then we're gonna sneak some glue down right in the right here next to this post and just press it into place and let it hold. Perfect. Just like that. So we're gonna come back and put a little bit more glue in here and, and get this wire flat. Let's go ahead and get this other part of the strip in first. So the next thing we're gonna do is, this is land like this, just fold it in. And we're gonna glue this LED into the A button spot, which it should just pop right in here like this. And it should like kind of fit perfectly right there. So you wanna make sure that the most important, this is probably the most important LED to be careful with the glue because if you have any glue coming through this hole, it'll rub on the A button and your A button won't click right. So I try to keep the glue off to the side if possible. So I just kind of hold it, sneak some in there. Kind of was messy on that. It's all right though. And I said, just be real careful not to burn yourself on this one because this one you kind of have to hold it with your finger. So what I'll do, so you can see it oozing through right there. While it's still wet, sneak your finger up in there and smear it down. It shouldn't be too hot after like four or five seconds. It should be good. You shouldn't get burned. You can always let it dry and do it after. I just think it's easier to get it off once it's still a little bit hot. You can actually go ahead and grab an A button now and test it. Grab this A button here and make sure it's not sticking. So it should just drop right in. That's what you want, and then that's perfect. Should be able to pop it straight out. All right, good. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this LED down. So it's kind of, you gotta kind of fold it a certain way. And this is the other reason that we tape off the contacts because if the contacts start folding on each other and touching, it can, it can mess it up too. So, so fold that down. See how I'm creasing it right here? It's gonna get creased right here and that allows this to show up and then it'll shine through underneath. Same thing we did over here. So lay it flat like that, line it up so it it's, corresponds to this one pretty well. Lay it down and then what I'll do is I'll just flip it up like that. A little more glue right there, just a little bit. Lay it down. The only thing we have to do now is we need to tuck this part down with a little bit of glue. So that's why we cut that earlier. So these will kind of overlap each other and we want it to lay flat. We got to get, you got to get these wires to be under the start button because then you know it won't mess with anything. So that's good. Get a little glue right there. And there push it kind of pinch it down i'm not touching the glue at all so it's not it's not hot good all right perfect there we have it so now the front of your controller shell should look something like this and then of course if you're not doing a clear back you won't have these ones on the sides you would have skipped that step and you would have went straight from here straight around here and then straight to here and then around here it's a little bit easier to install it that way so now that we have that installed we're on the home stretch all we have to do now is get a controller, install the board, and prep the buttons. So I'll go ahead and disassemble it. Here's our controller board, ready to go. Now when it comes to these aftermarket buttons, they do require a little bit of tweakage to get them to fit and uh, function correctly. And I'll show you how to do that really quick. So the only things we're gonna need to tweak is the analog stick and the Z button. So for the Z button to get it to fit correctly, we're gonna need to round this edge, cut these tabs off, 
and then round this off a little bit. And then you can kind of, if you've never done it before, you you kind of just do it a little bit at a time and it'll, it'll start to feel better as you go. But it's pretty simple. I don't know why they don't make them. Like they figured out how to do the shells. I don't know why no one can figure out how to do the buttons, but they've always been like this. I'm gonna take this little piece out right here from the Z button, put that right here. Just hit it a little bit with some, this is grip tape. I don't know. I think grip tape's like 200 grit, something like that. Round that and then round the edge too. And then it'll click perfectly. Okay, great. Now I just need to take a little bit of this tape. I like to use masking tape because it's thicker. Little strip like this, roll it up. Or you can skip these steps completely and just use a normal Z button and a normal analog stick. So roll it up like that and then fold it. And then grab this and then shove it in the post hole like that. All right, go ahead and grab your controller. Let's go ahead and put the sticks on. Press it in pretty hard. Some C stick, get it all the way down. All right, so now we're ready to assemble. Grab your back, I'm gonna grab the springs. Now you wanna make sure that you get that LED strip around the little rubber pads, and it, I'm, I'm telling you to hold it in, perfect. All right. And all right, there you go. It should look something like this. The strip shouldn't interfere with the B button right here. Everything should feel flat. So let's go ahead and install the board. Cut this wire, it's like that length. A little bit of solder on those wires. On the controller board, the red wire is going to solder to the second pin from the left, which is this one right here. Second pin from the left. And then the black wire is going to solder to the pin at the very end here. So set your controller down, get a little bit extra solder on the pins a little bit. Be very careful not to bridge any of the pins. Okay, now this part's kind of tricky if you've never done this before, especially if you've never soldered before. This part can be pretty tough, but you can do it. So just kind of hold it in place. Call your friend over, have him help you hold it. And you can keep those wires longer if it's easier. It's just easier with routing them if they're shorter. Okay, so just hold it in place, tap it. Tap it, just tap it until it's good. Just keep tapping it. Don't hold it on there because you can you can fry these pinpoints pretty easy, trust me. So just tap it until it's good. And then same thing with the black one. All right, we're good. And then you should look something like this. Red there. Black there. Go ahead and take a screenshot of that if you need to. So carefully grab it, make sure this pad is sitting flat, and fold it down into the board. Now this is the part where you wanna be careful you're not pinching any wires. You see right here how that black wire is poking out? That black wire is poking out a little bit right there. That's why we cut that little channel for it to go in. So grab a screwdriver or something, tweezers, and poke it back so that your board sits flat. You wanna make sure that your board is sitting all the way flat to its normal position. 
There we go, perfect. Go ahead and wrap your wire back, tuck it in, and now keep pressure like this the entire time on the controller because that'll make sure that the wire doesn't pop back out of place. Okay, so next step, go ahead and put the Z button in. Now, make sure that these slides are up. They gotta be up. Make sure everything's clicking together and go ahead and get a couple screws in. All right, there we have it, guys. Give it the test with the phone. Red, green, blue. As long as you got red, green, blue, you're good. All the other colors should work as long as you have the RGB. And like I said, if for some reason you're getting purple or you're getting only green, just go and check all your solder points and you probably have something that's crossing or that's touching the way that you folded it. And the best part about this mod is that you can turn it off. You don't wanna play with LEDs, that's fine. This mod's really cool though. If you do multiple controllers, you can have them all set up to the same channel so that they all are in sync with each other. They can all be red, blue, green, whatever. And then also if you do this, it's really cool to do this mod with the GameCube and the ports because then you have your controller and your ports on your GameCube all correlated and it's pretty sweet. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions at all, I'm gonna have all the links in the description. We'll leave a comment down below. I'll try to get to all the questions. It's, uh, it's not the easiest mod to do, but it's definitely not the hardest either. And you can definitely do it. So thank you guys again for watching. And if you wanna see more LED mods, let me know. This is one of my favorite ones to do. And I've been playing this video for a really long time and I'm glad that these shells finally came along so we can do something a little bit a little bit cooler. One thing I do want to note about this mod specifically is that if you play Ultimate, make sure that you are always using a official Nintendo GameCube controller adapter. The only other GameCube controller adapter that I've used that has worked consistently without any hiccups with this mod is the Panda Global adapter. Mayflash adapter or any of the cheap third-party adapters on Amazon or eBay, they have issues with, I don't know, the voltage that they give out and it can either cause misinputs or just totally fry the controller, honestly. But uh, yeah, if you use an official controller adapter, you shouldn't have that problem. And then of course, if you use a GameCube or a Wii, you don't have to worry about that at all. But you guys have a good one and I'll see you on the next video.